In this video lecture, we want to look at some of the odds and ends of New Testament Greek grammar, but that uh, bits that are actually quite helpful in clarifying certain statements and parts of the New Testament. And, and particularly, we want to look at, in this video, conditional clauses in Greek, that is, if clauses, and also certain kinds of questions. Uh, Greek has a variety of, of uh, kinds of questions. Uh, that um, mean certain things, and we want to look at those in this video. So first, let's talk about conditions. Conditions are if, if clauses. There are basically two parts to a conditional uh, construction. There's the if part, and there's the then part. If I get the job, we will move to Wisconsin. So the if part gives the condition, and then the we will part uh, here tells us what the then is uh, under those conditions. Now there are two Greek words for if, and so Greek is more flexible in what it can obviously do with if than English is. In English these nuances, it's not that these nuances don't exist in English, it's that they are a little bit more subtle. Conditions in Greek, however, are a little bit more obvious because you have two different words for if. So the word a uh, is a if kind of statement where the condition is assumed to be true. For the sake of argument, the if is assumed to be true. There is another word for if, on, and if you've encountered the, 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 the word on, you know that on is like a little bomb. It throws everything up in the air. It makes everything a little bit more contingent. So if the conjunction hate means when, then hatan Hatan, with the on on it, means whenever. becomes a little bit more if, a more contingent. In the same way, a is if, where we're assuming the condition is true. A on is the iffy if. It makes it uh, possible. The if, the if is considered more a possibility than assumed as true. Well, let's this can be a uh, one of those things that ties your brain into a pretzel. So let's let's look at some examples. So there are four kinds of conditions. Uh, two kinds of conditions that use a for if, and two kinds of conditions that use a on for if. So the first class condition I want to talk about. It is as we said, the condition is assumed as true. So if you are a teacher you teach somewhere. So assuming you are a teacher, then you teach somewhere. It is A with an indicative verb in the if part. Indicative is the mood of a verb uh, that implies factuality of some kind. Now it could be wrong. It could be, it could be stated factually and be false. You know, Ken is a genius. That's stated factually. Uh, is it true though? So uh, the if part, when you're doing this first class condition is going to be A with an indicative verb. Now there are different options for the then part. You know, If you are a teacher, you teach somewhere. If you are a teacher, go teach someone. You know, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from this pinnacle um, before it is written. You know, you will not, his, his angels will give charge over you lest you dash your foot, foot against a stone. Um, that's an A with an indicative verb. Um, so. Um, it assumes that something uh, is true. Um, uh, now, the second kind of condition, however, still assumes for the sake of argument. It assumes for the sake of argument that the condition is true, but it's actually called a contrary to fact condition, second class condition, a contrary to fact. If you were a teacher, you would teach somewhere, but you don't teach somewhere, so you're not a teacher. Something like that. If, if if Jesus were a high priest on earth, uh, if you know, if Jesus were on earth, he would not be a high priest because there are already people who serve as a high priest on earth. So, uh, both of these kinds of conditions use the the conjunction a. Um, the first one assumes it's true and leans toward it being true. The second one assumes it's true, but in order to show that that what you're what you're talking about is false. And in, in English, uh, we use a past tense verb, usually, uh, if you were a teacher. Um, that's a, a good example of, uh, or you could say, if, if I were a rich man, 
if I were a rich man, la da 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 da, you know, that's a contrary to fact condition because I'm not a rich man. Um, so um, in both English and in Greek, um, a contrary to fact kind of condition is going to use a past tense verb. Uh, a with a past tense verb uh, in the indicative part is a clue that you're looking at a contrary to fact. A lot of times, although not always, Greek will also put the little bomb on in the then part with a past tense verb. And so if there is a, the if part of a condition is called the protasis. The then part of a condition is called the apotesis. Um, uh, if there is an on in the apotesis, in the then part of the condition, then probably you're looking at a contrary to fact kind of statement. So here are two of the four kinds of conditions. These are the two kinds of conditions that use the conjunction A. Uh, the first one, the first class condition uses A. It assumes that the condition is true. Uh, if you are a teacher, then you teach somewhere. You know, if one plus one is two, then, you know, whatever. So, but the second kind of condition is a contrary to fact. If you were a teacher, uh, you would teach somewhere. Or if you were the Messiah, you would know what kind of a woman is washing your feet. Now there, Jesus is the Messiah, but from the standpoint of the way these leaders of Israel are talking, they're talking as a contrary to fact. You, you obviously can't be a prophet. Um, that's the way it's worded. If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is wiping his feet. Uh, and they're, they're assuming contrary to fact. They're wrong, of course, uh, but they're, they're assuming, um, well, actually, they are right. Jesus does know what kind of a woman. They're wrong about the assumed values of a prophet is where they're wrong. But this is a contrary to fact in the way they word it. Uh, they are wording it, uh, if he were a prophet, uh, he would know, um, contrary to fact, because they don't think he's a prophet. So those are the first two kinds of conditions. There are, however, third and fourth class conditions that use uh, on, the other conjunction. And here's where uh, we're talking about the if part as possible. If he comes, we will go to dinner. Now, we don't know if he's going to come, but if he comes, if he's here on time, you know, or something like that, then we'll go to dinner. Uh, this kind of third class condition will use on with a subjunctive verb. Um, Hopefully you've uh, already uh, watched a video on, that uh, discusses subjunctive verbs. Subjunctive verbs have to do with the realm of, of probability or possibility as opposed to uh, factuality. Uh, and so uh, certain conjunctions, like the word if, um, expect a subjunctive verb. Other kinds of conjunctions that expect a subjunctive verb are uh, henna, in order that, uh, or uh, hatan, whenever. Um, those both expect a subjunctive uh, verb, um, but on with expects a subjunctive verb, and that makes sense because it is a condition uh, that is uh, about a possible thing rather than an assumption um, of truth, as with a. So, uh, if he comes, we'll go to dinner. There are different options in the then part. It could be a command. It could be, you know, if he comes, um, take out the trash. Uh, if he comes. Uh, will we find? Uh, will we find him? It can be, so it, the, the the then part can be a question, a command. It can, it can go different ways in the then part. But uh, for a third class condition, uh, it's going to use it on with a subjunctive, and it's going to be an iffy if, uh, a con contingent, contingent kind of thing. Okay. Now there is a fourth class condition uh, that the um, the New Testament doesn't use in a pure form. We have some protasis fragments of this, but not a full fourth class condition in the New Testament. This is where the if part is even more distant. If you would win the lottery, you could buy an, an island, but that's probably not going to happen. It's very rare, and it will have A with a mood that we've never talked about in any of my videos, and that is the optative mood, which is a very rare mood uh, in the, the New Testament. So A with the optative mood in the if part uh, is, is a, uh, a not likely kind of condition. You know, if I win the lottery, you know, I'll quit my job and, and blog for a living. So that, those are the four kinds of conditions. Two words for if, A and an on. A is used with factual kinds of conditions. If you are the Son of God, then you have the authority. 
or um, contrary to fact, if you were the Son of God, you would know this. Uh, and then the third part, the most common probably, um, if I get an A, uh, he will take me out to dinner. Um, but I may or may not get an A. And then the last one is, uh, if I if I would uh, go to the moon, I would take a rock home. Um, that's um, the far more distant um, kind of if. Four classes of conditions. Okay, second part of this video then, I want to talk about some of the different kinds of questions uh, that Greek can do. There are, of course, the nice ones or the easy ones, the factual questions. So the question mark in Greek looks like a semicolon. That's the question mark. A factual question will use a verb in the indicative mood because the indicative is a, the factual kind of mood. Now here, here's where we get some, some meat, some stuff you might not have known. There are, in Greek, questions that expect a yes answer. Those sorts of questions begin with the word ou. Ou means not. There are actually two different words for not in Greek. Uh, ou is the one that tends to go with the indicative. Uh, ou tends to be the more factual um, word for not. Uh, am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus? Uh, when Paul says this sorts of things in 1 Corinthians 9, um, it, it is a question expecting a positive answer, a question expecting a yes answer. Uh, it be questions that begin with ou, or uh, there are different forms of ou. Uh, there's ou, ouk, uh, ouksi, um, but they all begin with ou. So those are questions expecting a yes answer. There are also questions um, that expect a no answer. They begin with the other word for no or for not, and that is may. May is the form of the of of not that is used with other moods outside of the indicative. May is generally used with participles. May is very generally used with infinitives. Um, may is used with subjunctives. May is used with uh, optatives and so forth. So may is used in conditions. Uh, so um, ou is used, ou is the default, may is used in some other kinds of circumstances. So if a question begins with may, uh, it expects a no answer. All do not speak in tongues. Do they? No, they don't. Uh, so that, that's a question expecting a negative answer, a question expecting a no uh, answer. As I said, there are two words for not. There's ou. This is the word for not generally used with verbs in the indicative mood. Then there's may. This is the word for not used with verbs in other moods, with participles, with infinitives, and in conditions. The other word for not. Okay. Ou may, by the way, if you put them together um, and put them with a verb in the subjunctive, it ex expresses strong negation. One grammar calls it the subjunctive of emphatic negation. Um, and so in Galatians where it says walk in the spirit and you will certainly not fulfill the desires of the flesh you actually have not not there walk in the spirit and you will not not fulfill the desires of the flesh it's a, and which uh, which is in Greek is very naughty indeed um, two knots in Greek makes it even stronger not as opposed to English where uh, two negatives make a positive so that's ume in the subjunctive of emphatic strong negation Okay, here's another kind of question. These are deliberative questions. These are not indicative questions, but subjunctive questions. Questions where the, question, where the verb asking the question is in the subjunctive mood. So these are should questions. Should I stay or should I go? Uh, that would be a, uh, both stay and go in Greek would be in the subjunctive mood with a semicolon looking question mark at the end. What am I to do? Uh, that's again a, a deliberative question. It would be I do in the subjunctive mood with a question mark. Um, now you can recognize them because they have a question mark and a verb in the subjunctive mood. That's a deliberative question. And that is the end of uh, this odds and ends video dealing with Greek conditions and with questions in the Greek New Testament.